Hi, this is Greg with another computer support technology support video and this is just a brief video showing how to take a VCR videotape, VHS tape, um, and we're going to put it in this deck here which is a, as you see, worldwide video uh, compatible. And we're going to take it from here where you see it playing on the TV and then over to the computer that you see here. Um, now, Basically, there are, there's a lot of wiring going on. I'm just going to explain that really quickly. Going from the deck into this switch box where I'm selecting, as you see, VCR is selected. Then out of that box into the back of this converter. And the converter takes the video signal in. And then I have the button selected for analog in because it's an analog signal. It's going to come out of here as digital. And because I'm working on what I call Studio 4, that cable, the firewire cable, comes out of the converter box and goes over to that computer that's running iMovie. Now here's the little detail that you want to make sure you're getting right. Um, this tape happens to be, uh, it's not NTSC. And so if the through button is pushed, I still see it on the TV set, um, but if the through button is pushed, that means whatever the original format is, for example, this you can see in the display, it says PAL, it's going to go through and come straight on through the whole system as PAL, and the computer doesn't recognize that, hence the gray screen. So if I click this button here that says NTSC, it's going to read the PAL videotape and convert it into, here you can see it says output, I don't know if you can see that. Output is NTSC, so it's converting it to NTSC out, and now the computer can read that. So that may be a common problem uh, that some people have. And one thing I want to point out also is when you're in iMovie and you click on the little import um, thing that looks like a camera, it doesn't have to be a camera. It can be a VCR, it can be a converter box or whatever. Um, you click on that and this import window will show up, okay? And when you go to start the import, there's a button down here in the lower right-hand corner that says import, and sorry my contrast isn't working quite right. Uh, if we click on that, then it says, among other things, where do you want to save it to? This is critical. We want to make sure we do not save to drive one. That's the operating system drive, and if we save to that drive, we may fill up the hard drive and cause the computer essentially to crash or not to function. So we'd want to choose um, one of the other internal drives or preferably your own personal external hard drive um, that needs to be, by the way, formatted for Apple to handle these large files and to operate the most effectively. And also, it's better not to add to an existing event, but instead choose the default, create new event. And it's a good idea to put something like, let's say, the year, the month, uh, the day, here we are, is in this example, 2009-10-06, today's Tuesday, and then maybe your name, you know, whatever your name is, put that there. So later, since there are lots of other people using the computer, you can just differentiate between your project and other people's projects, etc. You can kind of ignore the split days into new events. Um, that could cause problems because you'd end up with multiple events. So just put everything into one event and leave this check mark not checked because that would take forever to analyze the video for stabilization issues. Um, but as long as you've chosen your own external hard drive or some other internal drive with plenty of storage space, uh, that is basically it. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or um, ask somebody else who might know. Okay, take care. Bye.